morning, everybody. Welcome back. It's time to head to the tent. It's 19 degrees here right now. And going to the tent, uh, I wanted to make it up there. And then we've had all these snow that came early here, little snowstorms. And I was unsure if I was going to be able to make it up before deer hunting, which is uh, exactly two weeks from today. And, but with the temperature being so cold up there, it's supposed to get down to, I don't know, 12 or 14 tonight and only get up today to 29 degrees. And then we have a couple of other real cold days. I have to get the stuff out of there that is canned goods, I, all the vegetables. Um, I have beer that's up there. I have pop or soda for you that are in the South. And I don't want to have exploded cans <laughs> in the tent. So that was a good enough excuse to get up there. I want to sight in the deer rifles or just make sure that they're still good. And so I'm only going up for today. I'm going to spend the night tonight and then I'll head out uh, back to the farmhouse here tomorrow morning. I have the trailer on the back of the truck with the uh, Yamaha Grizzly four-wheeler back there. I'm going to drop that off up here or up at the tent. And I'm going to grab my dad's, the one that got uh, smashed up, trailer that back. Uh, Zach can take a look at it whenever. But I'm just going to park mine in the same place. We've got one that works good for deer hunting. My dad is driving up today also. He said he was going to wait until I get up there in case there's any trees down. I have to cut them out of the way. I know they got snow up there. I don't know how much. I don't think they got any more snow up there really than we have down here, so it shouldn't be too bad. aren't too bad right here uh, but back there a little ways they were pretty icy kind of got to get into that attitude of you know you'll get there when you get there that's the best way to stay out of the ditch when I can get Pokan on the radio. Fresh wolf tracks had to be this morning. Right over here.
It's called Everything looks good in here. I see zero mouse sign. I really can't remember a time that two weeks before deer hunting, the lake is pretty much frozen over. I mean, there's a little bit of open water over there, a couple little strips, but uh, usually that doesn't happen until that, you know, first week of deer hunting or pretty close to it. bunch of stuff up here that won't have to come up with me when I come up deer hunting. If you remember last time I was here I wanted to get all of this washed and I did. This pillowcase right here, I bet you this has been here since probably the beginning. <laughs> It has been here a long time. Got a dozen pair of gloves. These are uh, the hand warmers. I bought a whole box of these. Uh, Sarah, I mean, I use them sometimes, but Sarah loves them. Everybody uses them for deer hunting. So we we'll, wanted to make sure we had some of those up here. I remembered a journal. So I just brought one of these. If you remember in the last video, I bought three of them. Uh, I left two of them back at the house. I brought one up here, and when I start filling out this one, this will be the fifth journal since the tent started. I brought up plastic fork, spoons, and knives. I think I've got a bunch up here, but I always look in the little drawer, and there's not many, and <laughs> I probably have a ton of them up here. But I remembered uh, paper plates, plastic cups, and I have how many of these? Eight pack, of, yeah, eight pack of soft white, 100, the equivalent of 100 watt light bulbs. And they brought up some more toilet paper. We still had a bunch here, but uh, usually that bin is full and it's getting down there and winter's coming, so I brought some up. Won't be running out of those anytime soon. I didn't even bring up any milk this time. I'll probably be drinking bottled water or bottled fruit juice.
warming up fast up front here. And I remembered to bring up gun smoke. I would have sucked to be up here for deer hunting without this. Well, my dad just texted me. He just showed up over at the folks place. He said it was 27 degrees inside the cabin. Uh, there was nothing that was frozen. He was worried that the, like his dough and heat, the uh, scent stuff in the little glass bottle <laughs> would break and crack and he'd never get that smell out of there. I brought up some AA and AAA batteries. I think I think a D batteries, which I don't use much up here. I think the only thing that really takes them is the uh, the little flickery lamp in the bedroom. But I had them, and then I brought up a bunch of 30 odd six shells and 243, so I can shoot those guns. Hopefully they're still right on from last year. I know. I don't think I've ever seen it freeze over this early before. Oh, there's a lot of times on Right. Man, I sure walked on it. Didn't have anything open, cracked. I didn't either. No. Oh, I thought for sure. I, did too. I had put the to do spray in my sink in case it broke, and I thought after what a dummy you were. <laughs> we got on the wood in there. <laughs> oh, but no. Nothing to cover. They didn't know. Everything here was good too. The this stuff here is kind of getting that light color oh, yeah, that it didn't freeze, but nothing was frozen. Oh, so. oh, is that oil? Yeah, I always check that with no, my I coat always here. um, I have one can. Uh, I put it in a, 
I said it in Salida Bowl. Oh, do you? I never yeah. had one crack. I no, no. I, I, to even at to, to hairspray, I thought that there's probably enough alcohol in there. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, in about two, two years, you know, probably have to put, 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 put a new hip in. Oh, he did. Oh, yeah. yeah and he showed me he had a X-ray of 2018, and then he had one. About, uh, a week ago, you know, 2020, and then he sure showed show me where that ball is. He said, where it rubs on the bone, you know, he he he, he showed me the 18 and the 12. Oh, oh, oh. oh, well, why is else going to need? Oh, why? It's because you see that it was different. Yeah, it, it's getting smaller. And he said, if they hit, they hurt, you know. Oh, sure. Yeah, and I asked him, well, how, how do you pull it in the hip? So he had, had you know, had a computer there, so he bring it up on the screen and rolled it up, and he showed me that they cut that ball off, and then they they have a whole bunch of different size balls, and um, yeah, she was a sister. But Gloria, you know, the Gloria Munson, but um, she, she was a young, the youngest of all of them. Was she? No, no, she, no, she wasn't. Jane was. Because she, she, Jane was, um, was, was too late in the life. And, so, who, whose mom was Gloria then? Gloria was my dad's sister. Oh, okay, it was. Oh, okay. Your yeah. dad's sister. Okay. There was my dad, Gabriel, Gloria, and older. Yeah, I wonder with the snow, because like usually we come up here for open air, there's really not much snow. Then it snows, yeah. and then there's no deer for a while, and then they get back and like in that end of the second week and into the third is when we shoot the deer. Yeah. So I'm wondering if with this early snow, if they'll get into that pattern, because then they move more up by where you are. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping the the wolves are going to come on, but we we see them up here all the time. Right, right. But maybe it's, you know I don't know if they are, are only in certain small parts. I don't know. I know, remember last year that wolf came right by my stand, me to you away. Oh, yeah, yeah. And a half hour, 45 minutes later, I yeah. shot that deer. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I've just seen him in a morning going out to put my stand. They're in the trail, you know, because when they look so fresh, that's it. when you you get your stand, it, it all looks good. Right. <laughs> because if you, you, you are with, with the gun, it's empty. There's shells in the cliff. Right. But, but that, but, but um, yeah, what are your chances of getting it loaded and shooting it? Yeah, so I'm gonna prove to bring my blood out there. Oh yeah. But I'm also on horses. Today, guys, he threw up. He said at least six a day. And he said also, he said, you know, I should start. George and a kid ain't, he said, he then said, if your left side hurts, you put the cane on the right side. If and I said, I thought it'd be the other way around. He said, no, it's the opposite. Huh. If your left hurts, you piece, he, he said, because you put so much pressure on your right side. But all kind of piney stuff that she said around it. Oh, good. So she should be all ready to go. No, I had a, you know, some place so I have one of the roofs. I have one here too. Now I have one on mine. Sarah has one on hers. Okay, Zachary doesn't have Sarah one. Sarah have one. So yeah, and I'll see if Zach wants one. But I do have a new one. I just seen hanging okay, up yeah. there. So. It should be because you know, if you think he might use, you should just take out the box and oh, yeah, and it out. maybe uh, put it on the wood pile or something under cover because 
Yeah. You don't, you don't, you don't, all of them have the uh, terms. Yeah. Here, I, I should just do that, take it out anyway. If he doesn't use it, I can just shove it back in the box. Yeah, that's right. You know, yeah. so, yeah. Yep, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. If you call on it, it do, you don't. Did you see them? Where went the cabin? Well, my dad was here for, I don't know, probably 40 minutes or so. And uh, I need to make some lunch. It's after 12. <laughs> the store a couple weeks ago and they had these New York strip steaks in the clearance bin. They've got a little bin over on the side where you get stuff that's reduced. So I brought one of those up for lunch and then I think I already said that I'm going to do that duck and grouse for dinner. I think the sun is almost trying to peek out out there. And that's what I'm here to tell you about tonight, a western. A new television show called Gunsmoke. No, I'm not in it. I wish I were, though, because I think it's the best thing of its kind that's come along. That's a good looking lunch. Friend of yours, Mr. Dillon? I keep telling you, Sheriff. If you want me, you come take me. Well, the first one I'm going to shoot here is my Savage Axis 30 odd 6. I don't think this one has ever shot a deer yet because I always do uh, use my Mossberg Patriot, but Sarah will be using this one this year. That one is really good. It was, I mean, I can tell I'm moving a little bit and it's right even with the bullseye just to the right side. So I'm gonna call that one good. I'm not gonna play with it or shoot anymore. That would be a dead deer right there.
So next up is my Mossberg Patriot. That's the one I shot the deer with last year. I really like this gun. That one looks really good too. So next up is the Ruger M77 243. I've had this gun for over 30 years and I think I've only adjusted the scope one time and that's because that was just a few years ago because it always shot just a little bit over from bullseye. I've probably shot more animals with this deer with this gun as far as deer go than any of the other deer rifles. All right, there's the Savage Axis. Like I said, I'm not shooting them the best right there. It's a little shaky. That's close enough. That's my uh, Mossberg Patriot. That one's good enough too. And that's the Ruger M77. A 243 is just dead on. So I'm gonna call all three of those guns good to go. The 243 will just be a backup gun. And for those of you that say that need to, uh, if you can see where the targets are, go farther away. If you get a shot here that's that far away, uh, except for two years ago or three years ago where I had that one that was out 400, a really long shot, uh, that they're always closer than that. So that's all I ever have to do to uh, sight it in. That poor tree there, it's been dead for a long time and it's getting pretty shaky, so pretty soon I have to come up with something else.
want to run down to my far stand and walk in there and see if there's any tracks. My dad went out to his clearing stand there and he said there were deer tracks everywhere, more than he has seen in a long time. That doesn't mean anything for opener, which is still two weeks away, but, uh, but I mean, it's encouraging anyway. I've been texting quite a bit with George today too. He was up here, uh, it wasn't last weekend, but he was here during the week for three, four days. And he said on his trail cameras, he did not see any deer yet. I mean, right here, there's some people tracks where I don't know if my dad was walking or what, but there's deer tracks here too. Maybe on the way back, Sarah's stand is out in there. Maybe we'll run out and take a look at hers. She was already out there and got it all ready, but uh, I haven't seen it and I wouldn't mind seeing if there's any tracks. And since we're still two weeks away, it's not hurting anything. I bet these tracks we're seeing, I think I see dog tracks also. I bet you somebody was grouse hunting. Nobody has driven through here today though. Looks like two sets of tracks here, deer tracks. That's going back towards where George has his stands. Definitely some tracks on the trail going in but that does not mean that they make it all the way back to my stand. Usually they don't. Well, those tracks are still going towards my stand, but this trail here, remember I had the ground blind that would cover this trail right here, and they are using this for sure. Well, this one did come the whole way. There's my stand. It looks like the snow has kind of pushed the roof down. I'll probably walk out here the day before hunting and push that back up again. But right now I might as well leave it. But this is good. Let's see if it went all the way up there or if it came from the left here. Right from the left. This is the other deer trail. So I mean, if you see him coming down there, I've shot him on this trail before. If you don't get any chance when they get right here, you get a nice open shot. Let's walk beyond my stand toward the swamp and see if they've been running in here at all. Nothing back here except for squirrels. And see, I don't know if you can even see it, but that's the swamp right there. Well, there's a scrape right there. And then this one deer here that was walking, that's the one that walked. We'll walk up there. I mean, I can see my stand right there. And uh, this will walk right down and it would be the easy shot from the stand. We're just walking right where this deer walked. And here, you can see my stand right there. The very first deer that I shot in here. Um, I shot was walking right like this. I got it right about here. There's the stand again. Looks like it was nibbling around here on something, but I mean, my stand is right there. What's that? A hundred feet away. And like I said, if you didn't get any area to shoot at them there, right here is always good. Oh, let's go back to the truck. 
probably finish driving the loop and come back over to Sarah's. I might just completely stay out of the stand for two weeks and come out here on opening morning. Oh, we might as well check and see what the beavers have been doing with this area, see if uh, they're still damming it up or not. You can see the beaver tracks and their tails pulling right in here. They've got that one totally blocked off. And this one here is getting close. Well, since we're looping around, I thought let's go out to my far stand, far clearing stand. My dad said there was a lot of tracks that were headed up this way. And I can see there's tracks right here on my little trail going out. And they did not come from the road. They've been running inside the woods here. I'm just following these tracks to see if I would be able to see them from my stand. It kind of teed right here on this trail and goes this way, which is going right towards my stand. My stand is right there. So I mean right here, we're what, 60, 70 feet away? I bet you they're going to even get closer. Right here is exactly where I shot that deer last year. It was standing right here, and then it ran up over here, right where these deer tracks are. And then it dropped right here by this pine tree, this little one, because it was right before that log. So they've been running through here. It was up in there where those scrapes were along the trees. I don't know that I really want to go up there right now. That was a little bit later in the season, but uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm too curious. I got to go up here and see if there's any tracks along the trees. I don't see anything over here right now. But this tree line kind of goes through here and then it curves again to the left and I'm not going to go all the way up there. Let's just cut through the woods here towards my truck. See what we see in here. Rabbit tracks. Well, I didn't see any deer tracks coming through there. So the deer tracks that we did see, they must have came from the back clearing and then cut into the woods and kind of skirted their way through. Nope, they came out from this side of the road. And I bet you they crossed through right here and cut in. Let's run over and check out Sarah's stand, and then that'll be it. I still have to load up my dad's four-wheeler into the trailer and get that hooked up to the truck, but other than that, everything I wanted to accomplish, I will have gotten done. I have 
way too much clothes on right now for what I'm doing. Well, I don't see any tracks here for that are new anyway. There's some things in here that probably came through prior to the last snowfall. We kind of have a little snow shower going through right now, but usually they'll run right along here and uh, then back that way. It looks like she put a burlap around hers and her roof is, has come down also, but I'll just leave it. That kind of keeps the seat protected. She can push that back up when she comes out opening morning. Oh, she usually comes out the day before. I want to walk over here and to the right and see if there's a, there's that spot where there's a deer scrape almost every year. It's hard to tell with the snow, but that definitely looks like it probably was a scrape there. I mean, it's kind of uh, kind of cleared out. Not as fresh as that one, though, by my stand, but uh, they always end up coming in here. I had to do a little bit of tent maintenance. I've got this tarp that sits at an angle on this side and this one had gotten rotted out and had broken through. And there was one time um, where some water came in underneath one of the bunks when it really pours, it got underneath. So I put in a new tarp because I mean the tent has been here for what, 13, 15 years? I don't know, whatever it's been. and. Uh, She's still holding up good, so I was hoping to be able to do this before it froze and there was snow, but I got it in as best I could. Not sure if you can see it, but out on the ice there's a beaver that has come out of the water and is up on the ice now. I went and grabbed my other camera so I can do this here. If I can hold it steady enough. I don't know what it's doing, but it's not moving much. It must have his head down in there eating.
Well, that was pretty cool. I want to see what the footage looks like here and get it into the right folder so I don't uh, lose it when I start doing double cameras. Well, it's really nice to have everything done <laughs> that needs to be done and normally it seems like I'm running from, you know, dark to dark and to actually still be a little daylight out there is nice. So I was up here with Joni on October 11th and today it is October 24th. Seems I have a lot to write about up here for only going to be up here for a day and a night. <laughs> it's weird, sometimes I'll come up here and there's not that much to say. I just want to write what happened and the things that happened here. But um, my dad's aunt, um, even I always called her Aunt Gloria, she had, so she was my, my dad's aunt. So my grandpa Jensen, who I burn the lantern for every year at duck camp, it was his sister. And the last one of all the brothers and sisters that were still alive. Anyway, she had a massive stroke a couple days ago. And uh, my uncle Matt, which is my dad's brother, had posted that she passed away at 3.40, about 3.40 this morning. So we talked a little about that, a little bit about that when my dad was here. So I wanted to write some stuff about that. And then when my dad was here, he was talking about how he was just into the doctor and um, his hip is getting so bad, so they did x-rays, and he's been going in for a few weeks now. And the doctor said that within probably two years, he'll have to get um, a new hip. And they might go in and give him some shots or something, but it makes his knee hurt really bad too. And I think that's just the way you shift the weight and everything, because they um, took an x-ray of his knee, and his knee was fine. But my dad said where they, they took one in 2018, and now it's 2020. And, you know, the, the socket's in here. And my dad said, you can just see how it's, it's degraded. And the doctor said, as soon as that's gone and the bone on bone, it really hurts. So they told him also that it would be a good idea if he started using a cane sometimes. And uh, I don't know, for me, that's just kind of sad, you know. <laughs> I mean, I always enjoy when he's up here. And, um, um, you know, that's just one more thing that showing that he's old. I mean, he's 77 years old. I'm lucky to still have him, but still. Um, I like to write some of this stuff down so that years from now I can look back or somebody else can look back and kind of get the story. And this time seems to be a time when I feel like talking. <laughs> the short range. Lows level off around 18 tonight. We should top off around 30 tomorrow. Lows level off around 16 tomorrow night. I'm just getting all the meat cut off of this grouse and that duck. I mean I got the legs and everything. I just pretty much halved them without the rib cage or anything so nothing is going to waste.
Well, the duck is done, the grouse is almost done, and I cut up an apple and just threw it in to kind of that, that fruit type uh, taste, apples, oranges, anything goes good with, with this kind of stuff. Well, there's dinner. We have duck, grouse, mushrooms, peas, and that's because I only have small cans, a few of the small cans of vegetables. I had beets and peas left. Corn would have been the perfect thing to go with this. And then some long grain and wild rice. Well, the first Gunsmoke DVD is finished. I've seen all of season one more than once, but I might as well start at the beginning and just watched everything all the way through for the whole 20 years. Okay, everyone, it's about 1045, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. It's a little bit chilly out there.
Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching this short trip to the tent. Just a utility trip, kind of. Get the things done that need to be done. Get stuff taken out of the tent so it doesn't freeze. Next time up, it will be for the deer hunting opener.